working group and funders. And it's, um, one of its main tasks is to track the progress of um, people in Ashwe Africa and in Ashwe Bayanet and to adapt the training efforts um, accordingly. So some figures here, um, which come from the Ashwe Africa website, to give you an idea of the funding which is um, being spent um, for the whole of the project. Um, we've got more than 500 consortium members and other figures concerning number of projects that we currently have and um, publications and so on. So how did HKNDB come about? How did it um, come to exist? So um, in 2013, um, the idea came up to have a trainee trainer database um, to track um, how trainees who are following various training, um, how their career was evolving over time. So then there were various brainstorming sessions. There were various, um, during the Ashra Africa meetings as well, various discussions uh, were held between various um, stakeholders. And then um, we came up with a design and we started implementation of Edge Train DB um, in 2014. Um, the content management system that was used for the implementation was Drupal, at that time Drupal 7. Um, and then after testing with members and um, making changes to suit the needs of the consortium users, it, the database went live in 2015. So you can access the database at the link which has been provided here. And then since 2015, um, we've been using the database to um, register for various training, to register for conferences, to view trainings and so on. And this year, we've almost reached a thousand users and we've migrated to Drupal 9. So the first screen here shows how the database used to look like. And this is the new version of the database. Um, if you go to the website, this is what you will currently see. Um, how does it work? So, and why do we have this? So there are a number of workshops, webinars, mentorship, programs, internships, placements, fellowships that happen um, in Ashra Africa on the whole. And um, the funders and also the coordinators wanted to know how these training activities were impacting on the trainees, how their career were evolving. So we use that train to um, look into this, to look into this, how the training activities are impacting on the trainees themselves. And then we use these results to adjust the training activities. So how is this um, done? Um, for example, we evaluate how um, the career of a person is evolving over time. Um, if the person is now being able to um, maybe get new fundings for research projects, if the person is being able to produce um, publications um, and maybe go for further studies, and um, um, these are the criteria we use to evaluate maybe how um, the career of the person is evolving. And then based on these results, um, we adjust the training activities of the consortium. So how does HTNDB help um, you? So we've got two types of users. We've got authenticated users, people who register on the website and have access to specific things. And then we've got normal users who do not need a username and a password. So for unauthenticated users, this is a centralized place to view all information pertaining to Edge Free Africa events. So we can see everything related to training, meetings, conferences, other events, and also Edge Free Africa webinars, as well as publications of all our members. And using Edge Train DB, we can also access the newsletter and the digest. Um, authenticated users can do a bit more than the others. So we've got two types of authenticated um, users. You've got administrators and normal users. So authenticated users can advertise and record training activities. They can create survey questionnaires and web forms for various purposes, of course, related to H Africa. They can apply for various trainings or conferences or for the biannual H Africa meetings. They can book uh, meeting rooms and they can generate and download different kinds of reports from um, H2NDB. So we, I mentioned we had unauthenticated users and authenticated users, and even these authenticated users, they've got different roles. So we've got trainees and fellows. 
So unauthenticated users have a number of functionalities that they can, that we've just seen. Then you've got trainees and fellows who have a bit more um, functionalities. And then you've got the trainers who also have more functionalities. And finally, we've got the study coordinators and funders who've got even more um, options. So what can trainees do um, when they register to use at TrainDB? So they can use this platform to manage their CVs and profiles, and they can submit applications to the various events of Actually Africa. They get weekly updates of upcoming events, and soon they'll get access to a pool of writing coaches and mentors. We also have um, fellows. Fellows are young um, researchers um, in Asia Africa and also outside Asia Africa, and they can apply. So these people, they can um, fellows, they can apply to attend the consortium biannual meetings. Um, they can view the biannual meeting agenda for fellows because normally when we have the meeting, which is usually about a week, um, fellows have a special um, agenda to help them, for example, in public speaking or to help them write, um, apply for research funds and so on. So these fellows, they can view the agenda for the meetings on H2NDB. They can apply for travel fellowship to attend the various h Africa meetings. They can view the calls for these meetings. We can view the list of all travel fellowship awardees on the H2NDB. Um, normally during the meetings, we also have um, presentations and posters, and there are winners to these sessions. So we have a list of all winners on the H2NDB website as well. We can also access minutes of meetings and view webinar information. Now, um, of course, this web um, site is very important for, for coordinators and funders. So registered event coordinators can use that train DB to announce upcoming events and opportunities on the calendar. So we can also access an inbuilt application form and evaluation form. So evaluation form can also be to evaluate um, training and to obtain feedback following different training. It can also be used to monitor and manage all applicants for the various events, for the consortium meetings, for the conferences, for the trainings themselves, and also to track the progress of different projects and the consortium training events, to manage and download automated training data for reporting for the key funders, and soon we should be able to manage and download trainees' progress report. This can partially be done at the moment, but um, it can still be improved. Um, we'd like to point out that um, H2NDB is POPI compliant. So POPI stands for Production of Personal Information Act. It's um, very similar to the GDPR. It's the South African um, law. Um, it's uh, it's specific to um, data protection. Um, in short, Poppy states that any entity that stores and possesses personal information should do so in a responsible manner and ensure the integrity and confidentiality of the data, which we do. So um, as a, a Poppy compliant um, database, we are required to take appropriate, reasonable and technical and organizational measure to keep the data secure. So the act considers personal information to be any data that can be used to identify somebody. So all personal data um, collected via HTMDB is not shared unless we have the owner's um, permission. So also um, the server is not connected, is not exposed directly to the internet. Um, we've got very few administrators, so limited administrator access to the server. And we also employ intrusion detection system and intrusion prevention system. So if you wish to access the database, you can click on the following link. And when you go there on the home page, you will find that we have the latest conferences, the latest events, which can be workshop and conferences and even trainings. And also all the webinar, which usually um, are done for in H3 Africa. And we also have the links to um, previous um, webinars. And um, we have a spotlight section where every month one person um, 
is um, written about here. So the spotlight would be of one specific person. So here I've shown um, two different spotlights for two different Dutch Africa study coordinators. This one is the one you will currently see on the website. Um, as I mentioned previously, we can use um, H2NDB to book a conference room. And you can see here we've got various Uber conference rooms, go to meetings, and we also have the number of users that these meeting rooms can accommodate. Of, of course, all this is for members of H2NDB. So I mentioned we could also have a look at publications of members. So um, this is publicly available. So when you um, click on publications, you will have a list of all members. Um, and if you click on this, it takes you to um, the PubMed um, website. So I clicked on it for myself and I was taken to the PubMed website, which shows um, various statistics about my publications. Um, then a very interesting thing that we have on the home page for registered users again is by clicking on the calendar, we can create any event. Uh, by event, I mean it can be a conference that we are holding, it can be um, a webinar, it can be a training, um, and we can use that um, interface to create events which can then be shared to all members of the consortium and they can also apply for those events online. Um, that's it. Um, I can show you um, more if we have more time, but I think I'm almost reaching 15 minutes. So I cannot come um, end my presentation without acknowledging the other authors who have contributed to this work, as well as other members who have directly or indirectly contributed to this database. And that's it. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Zara. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So we have plenty of time for questions now. I would have one while people... Oh, okay. We have Cass Brooksman. So she wants to go on sabbatical in Mauritius. And she also has <laughs> another question. Um, this is super. And your use of the logical framework structure input output outcome look closely parallel while approaching Cabana project. Uh, if Maria is in the in the call, she can give um, more information about this. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I have a question also, and so how the trainees, uh, what kind of, um, do, what do they see when they get into, you said that you have the non-authorized and authorized, and are, those are the trainees. What they see is, is that also, also a database or a content for, for, as a content management system also? How does yes, they, yes. Um, so when they normally when they um, will register on the website, they will automatically be registered as trainees mm -hmm. unless they get special permission. So most people who will register by default will be um, trainees unless the administrator puts them as a funder or a study coordinator or a trainer. So then they would only be able to apply for training they would be able to upload their CVs. And then because they've registered on the website, automatically their names will appear on the list of members and we will be able to see their publications and also maybe contact them in case we want to work with them because we have common fields of interest. Mm -hmm. But they won't be able to see, for example, reports on trainees, feedback on trainee and, and um, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they also have, uh, is the same uh, con platform that is used to uh, to share with them content from of courses yes yes mm -hmm. yes we use the same um for the content of the courses it depends because the interface is to um, advertise any course that takes place in the consortium it doesn't have to be an online course it can be um an online course it can be a face-to-face -face course as well mm -hmm. yeah so if it's a face-to-face -face course, then maybe the content will not be shared for the platform. Okay, so, so it's, a, it's an integrated platform where you yes. have, so all for the registration and also for the content and also during a course and also as a e-learning support, let's say like this. So people that can learn from anytime, anywhere. Yes, but we also have another platform for the e-learning, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So there's one question. So um, someone is trying, so he's an anonymous attendee, is trying to access and get a war gets a warning. The site ahead contains, well, it's apparently that person because Marta has already tried to come to, to click on that. He, she didn't have the, pro the problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, um, maybe I'll just copy and paste um, the URL again in the chat. And then maybe I'll just put it here in the chat. Wonderful. And maybe in the question and the answer session as well. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Oh, it's well, but it, yeah, yeah. If people can yeah. see it in the chat, everyone can have yes. access to it. Thanks a lot. Any other questions? If you have any questions, you can also raise your hands and I can give you uh, the allow to talk. And I had a question also then for the non-authorized and authorized. What's the difference? What did they can see um, when you are not authorized? Is so, uh, yeah, so when you're not authorized, you can view, but you cannot apply. Ah, you can okay. use the application. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you cannot apply for any, um, you cannot book a meeting room, you cannot create an event, you cannot apply for a training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see, I see it better now. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. So, we don't have any other questions. So. Now we are going to move on. Thank you very much, Zara, again.